Why don't we stand? Can we open up this evening in prayer? If we could lift our hands, invite the presence of God in here tonight. Can we lift our voices with our faith? Come on, all over the building. Let's lift our voices. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for another day. God, we welcome you in this house tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every person. God, every person that's home watching right now, God, that you would touch them. We pray for your healing virtue. We pray for miracles. We pray for someone to be saved. We come to worship you, almighty God. We come to lift up your name and magnify your name. Can we clap our hands to the Lord right now? Come on, do you have a hallelujah in your spirit? Could you shout hallelujah? Let's worship the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. You are
come and shout hallelujah in this house. Woo! Oh, why don't you just dance in place, jump, do something? I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. The honor and all the praise. You know why it makes me want to shout? Tonight. And all the glory, and all the honor, and all the praise, yeah. It makes me want to shout, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. And all the honor, and all the praise. I want to clap our hands as thanksgiving to God. Jesus has ever done something for you, why don't you clap your hands mightily? Come on, that's what the Bible says. Oh, clap your hands to all you people and shout with a voice of triumph. Won't you just go ahead and shout? Come on, you shout a louder at that at a ball game. Come on, you're in the house of God. Somebody shouting to God. Lord, you're worthy. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Give somebody a high five and say, we're having church in this house. I didn't say church. I said church. We have some church in this house. God's moving among us, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here tonight. What a great move of God. I want you to look around here. I don't know. I'm not counting, but there's close to 200 people in here tonight probably. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm usually more. Somebody said there might be more than that. Yeah, probably so. But what a good crowd on a midweek. You may be seated for a moment. And... Um, Thank you for being here. I have so many friends in here. If I start naming, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble. But I look and see a few people. Is, is Paul and Silas in here tonight or just Silas? Silas is in the house. That was one of the greatest moments in pastoring in 20 years. I've preached about Paul and Silas my whole life, being in a jail cell and singing songs. And then all of a sudden, an earthquake came and the prison door opened and they was released from prison. They had revival in the book of Acts. And then all of a sudden on a Sunday morning, I said, what's your name? He says, Silas. Wave your hand back there. <laughs> Look at old Silas. Go ahead and stand up, Silas. <laughs> Silas, so glad you're here. And I, and I said to him, I said, I just would to God. We had a Paul in this house. He said, Paul's right there. <laughs> so we baptized Paul and Silas that morning. And I'm so excited for an apostolic revival. I'm not going to get into naming names, but I remember at one point I was teaching a Bible study to a man at a prison, and, and, uh, and all of a sudden he was a prison guard, and he, he spoke up and said, I want to be baptized, and the warden said, I want to be baptized too. And we baptized him and the warden in Jesus' name, so we're having some revival. Can I get a witness? And such were some of you, but now you're washed, and now you're sanctified, and now you're justified. I'm thankful I've been washed. Oh, somebody shout with me a moment. We got announcements, but I'm so glad I've been washed in the name of Jesus. I've been blood bucked. I'm no longer what I was, but I've been changed by the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody shout amen. I'm preaching in the announcements for heaven's sakes. Feel Jesus in this house. Praise God. Great things going on around here. I do want to say to all of our uh, cooks on Sunday morning that serve, could you stand one more time? I know you're probably holding babies and everything else. You, if you work the kitchen on Sunday mornings, could you stand? Brother Leon, look at this. Look at this crew. <clears throat> Thank you for all the hard work. And I know some money's come in. I think they went through 10 pounds of potatoes on Sunday morning and fed 108 people. And that is one of the best, you can't get that breakfast at Bob Evans, I'm going to tell you right now. And so keep that up, and uh, so whatever you need, please continue. But aren't we thankful for them and all that, the fellowship on Sunday mornings. Praise God. Uh, we do want to pray, take a moment here and pray for a few people if we could. Uh, Sister Corey uh, has had surgery, want to pray that God would touch her. She's always in that kitchen trying to keep everybody straight. She'll sneak up on me. I'll say, Corey, what do you want? I looked at her one Sunday morning. She's staring at me. I said, stop doing that. Stop, Corey. Stop staring at me. I love Corey. 
She's always uh, here and faithful. And if you have a special need tonight, you can remain seated by the lifting of your hand. If you have a special need, you need God to touch. Corey's there in the hospital and pray God would touch her. Look at all the needs. Could you just leave your hand up a moment? Could we take a moment and petition God? We have entered his gates with thanksgiving, into his with praise. And now we're going to petition God. Could we do that right now? Just bow your head if you want to. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God to touch these needs tonight. I pray for Corey, God, that you would visit her right now and continue to touch her body. All the needs that are here, I pray, God, your hand upon these situations. God, we trust you with our lives. We trust you with our families. And we know that your blood was shed, God, that we could have healing. And I pray, God, you would save our families, touch our families. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. Where's Quentin at? Brother Quentin, would you come here? And I know Mama's here, but we we're, we love you and happy birthday to you. Thank you for everything you do for this church, and we absolutely love you. Go buy you something for hunting or fishing. I guarantee you where that's going. And uh, we love him so much. Praise God. So many great things that are happening around here tonight. Our life class, our discipleship class that we do, and we're getting ready to graduate multiple people Sunday morning from that. And you literally leave uh, from that session. We'll save you four years of Bible college in 17 weeks. I heard an amen. That means they went through that class. Uh, but it is a great class. If you have never done that, we'd like for you to be involved in that. So tonight, we start our first lesson again. And if you are already signed up for that and you're wanting to do that, when we dismiss that the offering, you can go down and be a part of that life class uh, downstairs. It'll actually be in my office, and there's a class set up for that. Praise the Lord. Um, just a few other announcements. Um, please see one of the ushers if you have misplaced something and need to check or lost and found box. Uh, we keep things for a week, and then I take them home. And uh, that's not in the announcements. It depends on how nice it is. So I don't think I've ever taken anything home, so don't get worried. So I know we get calls and things, but we do have them. Um, praise and worship practice this Saturday uh, between uh, from 9 a.m. to 12. And how many is thankful for our praise and worship? They did a tremendous job. Thank you for all your hard work. Somebody said, they do really good. I said, they stay for three hours at a time. They work hard for it. And uh, also, ladies' ministry is having a Galentine's party. Who named that? Give them a hand. They did good. Galentine's. Can you imagine if I said, we're having a guy of times? That would be one awkward party. Can I do announcements from now on? I'm having fun up here. <laughs> All right, Tuesday, February the 13th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Praise the Lord. And also, how many's got a T-shirt yet? This is Revival T-shirts. Get you one. And here soon we're going to have a uh, Sunday morning where we're going to wear all the merch. So make sure and, and get one. And look at your neighbor and say, you need to buy one right now. See, everybody else is doing it. Peer pressure in this house tonight. Praise the Lord. Why don't we stand this evening? Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Kids Church is dismissed at this time. You can go down. And then life class dismissal. Praise the Lord. Will be in my office downstairs and they will be waiting down there. Praise the Lord. That is a very important class. Praise God. We actually require it to be in leadership here at the church. And so if you are signed up, make sure and go through that. Praise God. All right, man, we got some empty seats up here. Praise God. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer? Uh, if you can follow the uh, prompts on our screens, you give to crosschurch.net, follow the prompts there, or text give on your phone, and follow the prompts. And also you can mail in your tithing and offering to 1122 Market Street, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26101. And I do want to say thank you to all of our active and inactive members uh, that give faithfully to this church. Thank you so much. This church is capable of doing so much uh, because of your giving. And I will say that I got a call today uh, just a little bit ago. And it was from a man that is at a car lot. I've been friends for years. And I don't know if you know it. We have three vans that are full every, almost every service. 
Where's Brother Chris Zimmerman? Brother Chris, you're going to love what I'm about to say. And so now Brother Johnny, where's Johnny at? Johnny drives now on Sunday mornings helping us uh, get people from the recovery home here. Uh, but we need another van, and I just got a call, so you're hearing it just as much as I've, I've got it. And there is a Ford van. It's a little, it's uh, just a few years old. It's got, but he, he said, I know David Bounds. He's out of Charleston. He said, I, Frank McClung, he said, I know David Bounds would love to have this van. And he said, it's $10,000. And I said, are you kidding me? These things are so expensive. So tonight in the offering, if you feel to give toward that, just make a memo on it because we're going to try to get that van because we have three full and we need another one. We do not have, uh, we just need more drivers too, right, Brother Chris? And so, but uh, we got more people need picked up. So this is going to be a blessing to the church. That's a great price on that van. And so I thought it was neat that a, that a car lot in Charleston said, I know a pastor that needs that van. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. So why don't we pray over the offering tonight, pray for God's blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on you today. God, we love you so much. I pray, God, you would bless all the people that give tonight. God, I pray you would open up the windows of heaven in their life and begin to bless them financially. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Let's give unto the Lord tonight. Praise God. tonight. I felt to have Brother Mark Thompson preach this evening and the last time he preached in here God moved in such a special way, didn't he? And so thankful for what God is doing in the ministry uh, my neighbor stopped me today on the way home and he, he said, Preacher, I don't know how you, how you get done, what you get done. I didn't know he paid attention. He said, You're always gone. He said, Are you ever get tired? And I said, Well, sometimes he said, you need some help. And I said, well, I got good help. And I said, I've got some great preachers. And he, he, uh, he's a good Catholic guy. And he'll pass our church to go to Mass. And he told me, he, I said, I've got good help and good preachers. He said, well, I'm glad. And so how many is thankful for the ministry in this church? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Could we stand this evening uh, for Brother Mark Thompson? So thankful for what he's doing and what Sister Morgan's doing. We're so thankful. We love you, Brother Mark. Take your liberty tonight. Love you, Pastor. I love what I feel in here tonight. I love that we can come into this place and God move on us and help us with every struggle, every need that we have. I'm very grateful for that. We will be reading now the uh, book, 2 Kings chapter 7, starting at verse 3, going through verse 8. I'm very grateful for my pastor and the help that he's gave me over the years and pouring into me all the hours him and his family has gave up for me and my family. Uh, I'd like to give honor to my wife. She's not here today. She's home with our son Gavin. He's sick, so I'm missing her, but it's me and my faithful sidekick, Lakin. We're here. Yeah. Very grateful for this. So 
We'll go ahead and get right into the word. And there were four leprous men at the entering into of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And, and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there were no men there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these leopards came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Church, I'd like to preach to you for a few minutes, sitting at the gate. If we can lay our Bibles down and pray together. Lord Jesus, I love you, God. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. God, I pray that you just have your hand on the service, God. Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts and our minds, God. I pray that you continue to help us grow tonight, Lord. God, I pray that you just move upon every aisle, God. Touch every heart and every mind. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And you can be seated. Five years ago, I found myself sitting at the gate. My life was out of control. I was beaten, broke down, had no purpose in life. I was in a psychosis. I, was tr I truly needed to be in a psych ward. I was sitting at the North Central Regional Jail. I just spent the last four and a half years of my life in prison. I sat in this jail with my mind a mess. I have burnt every bridge in my life. I had pushed every good person away from me. I was 20 days clean from drugs. I was still hallucinating. I remember being in a pod with the rest of the inmates passing these long, drawn-out days watching me. I, th I thought I was in this game show. Funny, right? <laughs> that would have been a terrible game show. I remember thinking that I needed to find the right combination. I remember thinking that if I found the right combination that I was, or it was like I was in an escape room. You know, people actually pay money nowadays to go in a room and get locked in. And they look for clues to escape. I have never had to pay to be locked in a room. It's always been free of charge. <laughs> the only difference, after an hour in, a, in the escape room, if you don't make it out, they will come and get you. I was sitting in jail looking for the right combination. I thought that I was... I thought that if, I, if one lunch tray would be in the right spot, and then maybe the phone needed to be unhooked. Maybe the pen needed to be over on a piece of tile. And if I pushed on the right block as I was walking in circles, then I was going to win the game. The doors was going to open. And then I was going to win this house and win all these things. I believe that I would have no problems if I found this right combination. Just imagine with me for a minute, watching some guy move things around all day long. Always looking for the right combination to line things up perfect. I remember telling one guy, 
that we was in a game. And he looked at me and said, no, we're not in a game. We're going to prison. I thought he was the crazy one. I thought he was just trying to fool me. I thought he was trying to distract me so he could win the game himself. I sat there day in and day out looking for this right combination. I would have moments when my thinking would be straight. And then I would realize how crazy I truly was. I was reading the Bible every day. I didn't know the Lord, but I was making an effort. I remember praying to God, asking me, asking Him to help me to clear my thinking. I knew that if I stood a chance, I needed a miracle in my life. And God answered my prayer in that jail cell. I realized that I was never in a game. Man, talking about embarrassing. I just want to stop here for a moment and point out to you that I did find the right combination. I was seeking for it and I found it in the Bible in Acts 2.38. Come on, yeah. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, if you've been searching for the right combination tonight, look no further. It's right here in your Bible. There's nothing else you need to look for. That's the combination. And I found it. And I'm grateful for it. There were four leprous men sitting at the gate. They asked herself, why we sat here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit here, we also die. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. They were sitting at the gate. Their future didn't seem bright. How would you like to be sitting starving to death? It was bad. They knew if they stayed where they were, they were going to starve. They was getting ready to go into the enemy's camp. Let's think about this for a minute. Times was so bad. They was going to the enemy's camp hoping they would let them live. Hoping for some food. Hoping for mercy. I wonder how bad things had to be in order to walk into the enemy's camp. They was desperate. I could only imagine they had to try tried every option they had. I believe this was the last resort. Let me stop for a minute and say, if you're sitting here tonight not sure what your future holds, maybe you're at the enemy's gate looking in. Let me encourage you tonight, just keep seeking the Lord. That's about, that's the power of God. You could have walked in here tonight, not sure what your next step is. Maybe you burn every bridge in your past. Maybe your future doesn't look bright. Don't give up. Keep seeking God. Your future is bright. God is going to bless your life. He's going to give you more than what you ever had. Just start following God. Let Him lead your life. Don't worry about how bad it looks. You might be in a desperate state right now, but desperate is a good place to be at. It might sound crazy, but you watch God work in your life. You might walk in here tonight with nothing. You might have not, you might have been walking through life spiritually blind, clueless. The world might say you're a bad person. The world might say you're a troublemaker. Your family might say, don't trust him. Let me tell you what God's saying. It doesn't matter your past. You walked in here today a drug dealer or an addict. God is saying, look at my child. I see something in that man. I see a great leader. I see a minister. I see a Sunday school teacher. I see a bus driver. I see a Bible study teacher. God has always taken the counted out their entire life and made something great out of them. I know story after story, someone that is in a desperate state and God completely changes their life around. I hope I'm encouraging someone tonight. 
I believe that God is going to use you. Amen? Maybe you're not sitting at the gate yourself. Maybe it's one of your family members at the gate. Things might look bad for them. They might be running out of options. It's hard when you watch your family go through things. Just keep praying for them. God will save them. I stand here tonight the only member in my family besides my wife serving God. I know God's going to save my family. God is going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. You know how I know this? The Bible tells me it's for them. Keep praying. It's going to happen. The leprous men had decided to risk it all. They decided to go into camp. Little did they know God had already won the battle. You're sitting here tonight looking at an obstacle before you, unsure of your future. God had already defeated your enemy. He has prepared the way. Stop worrying. Just start walking. These men were hungry and sick. They were at the end of their life and they thought their chances were slim to nothing. And yet, somehow God caused the enemy to flee from them. So fast that they left everything behind. They found food, their immediate need. They found silver and gold and clothes. They were blessed beyond what they could thought possible. We got to understand how bad it looked. There was a famine. Everyone was starving to death at this time. They was eating donkey heads. They was eating anything their hands could get on. These men ended up with all the food they needed. God had scared the Syrians out of their camp. They were so scared they didn't grab a horse or anything. They, go, they was gone, left everything behind. Didn't grab any money, any food. They was gone. The men's first selfish reaction was to keep it all for themselves. But that is not what God wants from His people. Doesn't that seem like the human nature to be selfish? There is plenty to go around and we don't want to sh- share These men said to one another, We do not do well. This is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Conviction set in and they resorted to sharing the good news with the others rather than to keep it themselves. They recognized that this turn of event was for for the city. This would set the city free. Even though the city turned their backs on them, they didn't turn their backs on the city. We can't forget where we come from. We were just sitting here starving with nothing, counted out. Nobody wanted anything to do with us. Nobody even wanted to be around us. Most Most of you went through hard things in your life. I believe that God has allowed me to go through things in my life so I can help others. I believe that God has taken what was used for evil and now is using it for His good. I know it's easy for us to forget where we come from or where God found us. I remember the struggles from my past. I remember where I come from. I was thinking about it the other day. I remember not having nothing, not having a place to live not having any of my own clothes. I remember the only clothes that I had at the time was the clothes that I could borrow from my cousin. I remember walking all day long because I had nowhere to go. I remember my cousin would encourage me even when he wasn't doing well. I stand here before you tonight, a blessed man, saying if the Lord can do it for me, He can do it for you. Come on, I didn't have the power on my own. I had to walk through some fires, but God was always there. When God starts blessing your life, don't forget where you come from. Hey, I know it's easy for us to lose sight on God when we're blessed, but don't forget how hard you worked to get where you are. Come on, I thank thank God for the leadership that's in this church. And I'm not just talking about our pastor. I'm talking about the ones that are in the, out in the community with him day in and day out, reaching the city. There's a whole city that's counting on you. 
I, I truly appreciate you sharing the gospel. I told somebody the other day, I wouldn't be where I was if somebody didn't teach me a Bible study. And that's the truth. Somebody help me out. You know, a lot of times it's easier to sit on the couch and do nothing. Hey, come on. Long day, kids running wild, worked all day. It's easier to sit at the house in sweatpants than to go out and try to reach somebody. These men didn't even know that God was about to use them. They was getting ready to be a part of a miracle. The four men were in the worst situation possible. Enemies at their back. Death where they were, or death from the city. They had one possible choice. I know some of you in here right now thinking that you was in this exact situation. The enemies at your back. Death forward. You're going to sit here and starve. I know it can be hard when things are going wrong. We want nothing more than to just curl up and close our eyes and plug our ears and hope that this is all a dream and it will stop. That's not what God has for us. Fear and intimidation is a tactic of the enemy. It's time to get some fight in you. It's time to walk through the enemy's camp and start claiming things. Come on somebody, it's time for you to start claiming your family. And your friends, I know what you're thinking. Your family can't be saved. I know they are too far gone. I say to you tonight, remember where you come from. How far gone were you? Go ahead and claim it in Jesus' name. I think it's time we claim this city in Jesus' name. I think it's time for us to take our community back. I'm tired of watching people walk around homeless with nothing, being held by bondage, being a captive. I'm tired of seeing lost souls. You know what I see when I see people on drugs walking the streets? I see someone that, did, that don't know how to get a hold of God. I see someone that's not strong enough to pray for their self. I see someone that's been broken most of their life. We have an army in here tonight. I believe we can storm hell with our prayers. I say 2024, we take our city back. I say we take our family back. I think we start using our prayers and our faith. I say we pray harder. I say we start fasting for our kids. I say this year we break every generational curse. We have to step out in faith. Matthew 14, the disciples found themselves in a ship, in a storm, waves beating against a boat. And here comes Jesus walking unto them. And Peter said, Lord, if that bid me to come to you, and Jesus said, come. And Peter and the disciples were fearful and didn't understand what was happening. But rather than sit here, sit there stunned in awe, Peter took a step, a crazy step. Don't let your circumstance hold you back from taking a step of faith. When you step out in faith, God meets you where you are. So often I think I have things figured out before stepping out in faith. But then that's not really stepping out in faith. <clears throat> these, guys had, these guys was headed into the enemy's camp. Had no idea what or what they would face when they got there. But God went ahead and caused the army to scatter. God wants to show us His power. Not just in death and salvation of our soul. But in this life here and now. He wants us to depend on Him. None of, none of these options looked good for them. I will step out in faith and trust God with this situation. Not until we step out in faith do we see Him working. Can you imagine the reaction that the four leopards had as they entered the camp? I could only imagine they were shocked, figured they was getting ready to die. They had ran out of every option. God had already prepared the way. Here are these four men that had been used by God to save the city. Think about that for a minute. They was just a nobody. 
And now they had all the answers. They had all the answers. They was just counted out. I know some of us have been counted out. You know, but look now. Uh, Come on, go ahead and give yourself a hand. Hey, that's something to be proud of. I mean, if you're not proud of it, that's fine. But I am proud of it. Hey, I am proud where God has brought me from. I am proud of what God has done in my life. I don't sit here prideful to you. I'm humble. I know I owe it all to God. God did every bit of it. I had nothing to do with it. I just started walking. And I believe that there's multiple people in here tonight that God's pulling at your heart to just walk. Maybe you're unsure of what you're going to do. But just trust God. We can all stand as the music comes. If you're here tonight doubting your future, maybe you're unsure of the next move. Listen to this preacher tonight. Stop setting at the gate. It's time to take a step of faith. It's time to let the Lord use you and save this city. I know you're thinking, how how is the Lord going to use someone like me? It's just being obedient. That's the key. There's no big secret to it. Just be obedient. I know you're thinking, well maybe the Lord won't use me. Stop trying to figure it out. Just start walking. Can we all come to the altar together and make a fresh commitment to God? Bring somebody with you. Let's commit to go where God wants us to go. We're not staying at the gate. We're going to take back what belongs to us. You're the key to your family's revival. I ask you today to pray for some, pray like someone's life depends on it because it does. Who is praying for your family? Who is praying for your lost loved ones? If we don't pray for them, nobody will. If we don't reach a city, nobody's going to. Lord, we love you, God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing tonight, God. Lord, I just pray that you have your hand on every prayer, God. Every situation, God. Lord, I ask, God, that you hear their prayers, God. Lord, I pray that you give them strength, God. Father, I pray that you help them, Lord, walk with you daily, God. Father, I pray that you keep your hand upon them.
Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you.